Amen. Um, Sister Arnold seeing you just reminds me of so many of uh, the young people when you invested come and how they got saved. And, uh, you know, many of them t uh, continuing on in the Lord, mm -hmm. even to this very day. If mm -hmm. we could think back how long ago that was, you know, when we were yes. on, on Dunbar, you yeah. know. And uh, so it's really always a blessing uh, to see you. Amen. You know, and uh, be reminded of how good God has been. Amen. Uh, to us as a church, through your ministry. Yes. You know, uh -huh. and uh, to see that you're still standing and going for Jesus. Amen. 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 That sure does mean a lot. Amen. Right. Particularly in this day and age when it seems like so many have, have turned back, yeah. you know, from following the Lord. Yes. Uh, uh, one way or another. You know, Lord, help us. Uh, you know, not to turn back. Amen. 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 All right, well, if I was going to um, title my sermon, which of course I am, <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know, uh, it would be prayers that uh, get answered. Amen. 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 Prayers that get answered. I remember a time back, um, I can't really put uh, exact time on it, uh, but, um, you know, I was reading the Bible, and, um, and you know, time to time, uh, the Lord will impress certain things upon your mind. Mm -hmm. um, and the Lord impressed upon me, he said, Keith, what is that in your hand? And, uh, you know, obviously, you know, I'm not Moses or anything. It wasn't a rod or nothing like that. But it was a Bible, mm -hmm. you know. And I said, what's well, the Bible? And he said, no, 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 what is that in your hand? And I said, well, <coughs> it's your word. And he said, say that again. He said, it's your word. He said, now, that's what you said out of your mouth, but is that what you believe? Mm. See, uh, is it really my word? Right. And, you know, and of course, you know, I said, well, yes, it is. He said, then what will you do with it? It, it demands a response. Yes. See? Amen. It, is a, it demands a response from you. Yes. See? Is it my word or isn't it my word? If it is my word, yeah. then you will be an account be held account for yeah. it. Yeah, right. And if it isn't, then just go your way. Right. Right. See? Just go your way. See? Oftentimes in our Bible reading and study, it's somewhat like an academic exercise. Yeah, right. Right. See, we will treat it even though we would be amongst those who would say, no, 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 it's the word of God, but yet when we read it, it's just like that which is an academic exercise. This is what I'm to do today. Right. Is to read the Bible. Mm -hmm. Amen. And you are. Amen. Mm -hmm. And don't ever stop reading the Bible. Amen. Mm -hmm. Read the Bible until the Lord uh, takes you home. Amen. That's right. Amen. As long as you can. And if you can't read it, then have somebody buy you the DVD and you can listen to it. Amen. Right. Or get, get a phone and you can listen to it. But listen to the Bible all your life. Read the Bible. All your life. Amen. Yes. That's what the Bible, that's what the Lord tells us to do. It's our yeah. sustenance, our strength, yeah. you know. It's living water, it's bread, it's meat. It's everything that God said it is. Yes. But is it truly that in our life? Yes. See. I mean today, this week when you read the Bible, was it in your mind that you had had your, that was God's word in your hand and it was demanding a response from you or did you just read it because that's what I'm supposed to be do as a Christian to read it right. and I can get some knowledge from it which right. you will amen praise God amen. that's the truth amen, amen. but once you had our heart attitude toward it again this verse here in second in first Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 13 the Bible says for this cause also Thank we God without ceasing, because when you received the word of God, which you heard of us, 
ye received it not as the word of man, but as it is in truth, the word of God, amen. which effectually, yes. which effectually, yes. amen, again, effectually worketh also in you that believe. Yeah. See, amen, again, it had already worked in the Thessalonians' life because they had believed it. They had believed the gospel, amen. The yeah, Bible right. said they turned uh, from idols unto the living God, amen. Yeah. They had obeyed. The call of the gospel, amen. When the gospel is preached, it has a call to it. And there is to be obedience to that call, which is to receive Christ as your Lord and Savior. But then also, then we must continue to believe that what we have is not the word of man, amen. We're warned all throughout the Bible not to be uh, spoiled, amen, yes, amen, by philosophy, the traditions of man, vain deceit, yes. the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ, amen. amen. Paul amen. said, be careful. He said, lest any man entice you, amen, with the words of wisdom, with man's right. words of wisdom, right. amen. So we're uh, cautioned against that all our life. But again, the Bible says itself, if you believe it, yeah. it will effectually it will effectually work in you. Now, again, that word effectually just means it will be successful in bringing about the desired result. Amen? Right. The Bible will be effectual. It will be successful yeah. in bringing about the desired result in your life that God wants. Right. Amen? If you read it and believe it, and then act on it, amen? amen, as if it is in truth. Yes. The word of God. What did Jesus say? He right. said, think not that I've come to judge you. He said, the words yes. that I've spoken on you, they yes. will judge you in that day. Once again, right. letting me know, amen, yeah. letting me know, again, those words that Jesus spoke, what did Jesus say about the words amen. he spoke? He got them from his father. Right. Amen. What does the Bible tell us about thy word, O Lord, is settled yes. in heaven? He got them words from God. Yes, Amen. Now, Jesus said at the judgment, those words going to be right there. Amen. Amen. Now, what is he teaching us? He's teaching us, that, hey, heaven and earth going to pass away, but my words Amen. are not going to pass right. away. He's That's teaching right. us what? Them words are preserved, brother. Yes, sir, brother. And when people tell me, you know, what what about the Bible? What what, what Bible you got? I said, I want the I want the words that were sent down from heaven. Amen. Amen. I want those words, those words that were recorded and settled in heaven. Yeah. Amen. Amen. The Lord Jesus telling us, He said, Hey, the very words I'm speaking unto you, those are going to be the things that I'm going to judge you by. And yet He tells us in this life that we would believe those words. Amen. Amen. If we would believe those words, that they are in truth the word of God, that they would effectually, would effectually and successfully accomplish the desire that God wants in our life. Now, you know, the Bible uh, tells us we should pray. Amen. We talked a lot about prayer in the Sunday school hour. Amen. The Bible tells us that we should pray. You should pray. I should pray. Amen. Amen. And then as we read the Bible, the Bible gives us information and direction on how to pray. Amen? Yes. When the Lord was talking to his disciples in Matthew chapter 6, he told them, he gave them that model prayer. Amen? This is how you should pray. Amen? And he went through and showed them how they should pray. Amen? They should go in their closets and pray, not be seen of man, not be making a big show. Amen? Right. You should have a private closet, a private time for your prayer. Sometimes we do pray in public like we do here at church. Sometimes sure. You know, we go out to eat. Uh, you know, we should pray publicly, amen, sure, over amen. our food uh, because that helps people, amen. But at the same time, we're just being thankful to God. We're not really putting on a show, right. amen, when we right. give thanks over our food. We're just thankful, amen. And then plus we're praying that some of it won't hurt us, mm -hmm. amen. <laughs> when we eat it, amen. But then as we read our Bible a little further on, amen, then we find out that the Lord told now, he told his disciples a little later on at the end of his ministry, he said, now when you pray, he said, I want you to pray in my name. Mm 
Amen. Pray. Pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Again, Amen. and we know we took that to heart and we do that because it reminds us once again that uh, God is, that God has provided a way for us to speak to him and to come into his presence by his son, the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And now we can Bible say so we can boldly uh, come into his presence. Amen. We can come into the Holy of Holies because of what the Lord Jesus Christ had accomplished for us yes. in our life. Amen. And then we read a little further in the Bible. And then we come to the book of Romans. And now we find out, uh oh, now the Bible is showing us that, uh, you know, we have to be careful when we pray. Because the scripture tells us that we don't really know how to pray as we ought to pray. Amen. But that the Holy Spirit would help us in our infirmities and that he would pray for us and he would make intercession for us according Amen. to the will of God. Amen. So we're cautioned there in our praying that sometimes our praying isn't correct because of our infirmities. Mm -hmm. And of course, those infirmities in the context he spoke about was those infirmities that would involve pain, travail, mm -hmm. groaning. Mm -hmm. Amen. We don't ever pray as much as when we hurt bad. Yeah. That's right. Amen. 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 Whether it be physically or whether it be mentally yeah. or within our spirit. Amen. Yes. Right. It's something about suffering that makes us pray. Amen. And oftentimes we are tempted that God would remove that suffering. Okay. Amen. Yeah. But then the Holy Spirit will come in and say, no, yep. I'm not, that's not according to the will of God, mm -hmm. that it be removed. Amen. So then we'll show, uh oh man, we uh, have to be careful sometime when yes. we pray because we're not praying right all the time. Amen? Right. We're not right. praying right all the time. Now we read a little further, uh, you know, in our Bible, and we get to the book of Philippians, and the Bible says, yes. be careful for nothing. Amen? Right. Don't be full of care about anything. Again, now when we stop and we, we read that, you know, automatically the flesh says, no, no, right. <laughs> I'm careful about something. You know, I'm, I'm full of care about something, amen? But now God said, don't be full of care, amen? He said, but by everything, amen? Yes. We pray in thanksgiving, we pray in supplication with thanksgiving. Yes. Let your requests be made known unto God. So again, you know, we, you know, we got to let our requests made known. What is the thing that's troubling us? Mm -hmm. The Bible says, and the Bible says, in the peace of God, amen, yeah. we'll keep our mind and our hearts in Christ Jesus. Right. Prayer is a help for, as the buzzword is today, mental health, mental health, amen, mm -hmm. for the Christian, amen. You need peace of mind and peace of heart. Amen. Well, the Bible says you should pray right. on that matter, amen. Right. Mm -hmm. What is it that you're full of care about? What is it that's troubling amen. you? The scripture says pray. Again, now that is the word of God, is it not? And if, we, and if we believe that and we take that to heart, we by faith believe it and then we act on it, guess what God said he'd give to you? Heart and your mind. He'd give you peace. Amen. He'd give you peace. Amen. Now when we find things don't line up in our life with the Bible life, right. what's wrong? Yeah, amen. You are. Right. Amen. You understand what I'm saying? Amen. You are. And then it, if you really want that peace, you got to track that down. Amen? Right. Amen. Right. Why isn't that in my life? Because God said it could be in my life. Exactly. Uh -huh. And should be in my life if I would practice what it said. Amen? Right. Mm -hmm. And so then we read a little bit further in the Bible on prayer. Now, I hope you notice what I'm saying is we're reading a little bit further. Amen. Right. In other words, we keep going yeah. in the Bible. Amen. Okay. So many of my Catholic friends, <clears throat> I know, they don't go any further yeah. than the Gospels. 
That's right, right brother. That's you right. know, I don't know if you've ever noticed that enough about Roman Catholics, but I have some friends, Roman Catholic friends. We get together, we talk about the Bible, and they're always talking to me about something out of Matthew, Mark, Luke, or John. Amen? Right. Very rarely do they ever speak to me about anything in the Pauline epistles. That's right. Amen? That's right. But, like the charismatic and the holiness, where they speak about Acts 2.38, do you know there's more Bible past Acts 2.38? I don't know if you knew that or not, but there's more Bible. Amen? Well, there's more Bible past the Gospels. Amen? And we have to keep on reading your Bible. Amen? You're yeah. going to keep reading this thing all of your life yes. because it is God's book and yes. it's unsearchable. Amen? Yes. You'll never know it all, but right. yet you got to keep searching it. Yes, Amen? Sir, Amen? Because we can know a whole bunch about it. Amen? Yes. So we read a little bit further in the Bible and we get to the book of James. And now James said, uh-oh. I said, now here, you all you people warning and fighting there in James chapter 4, you know. Right. And you, and you want and you lust, you can't get it. He said, then you ask and you don't receive. Yeah. He said, because you ask amiss yes. that you might consume it upon your lust. And then as we look at those scriptures, amen, we say to ourselves, well, a lot of my praying is self-centered. Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. Amen. It's stuck on myself. Amen. Yeah. And a lot of it isn't really getting answered uh, because I want to consume it upon my lust. A lot of it is about material things. Amen. And so we find again, we're warned again about our prayers. Be careful. Amen. Just like you don't know how to pray, the Holy Spirit out. Oh, you got to pray, and then all of a sudden the Bible speaks about your lust. You know, your lust can get a hold of you. And, uh, you know, because we live in a world that um, is uh, into advertising a lot. Amen. Yeah. And they want to present to you things that the, that the manufacturer made just for you. Uh -huh. right. Amen. He had you in mind. <coughs> When they made that dress, amen? Uh -huh. They had you in mind when they produced that car, amen? Nobody right. else, this, and not only did he have you in mind, but you deserve it, amen? Right. You deserve this, amen? That's the world in which we live in, which entices our lusts, amen? Yes. To want us to want things, amen? Yes. And trust, and so we find out praying is that way. But then we read a little bit further, and then... We come to my text. Amen. <laughs> First John chapter 5. Amen. First John chapter 5. First John chapter 5. And let's read verse 14 and 15. Amen. The Bible says, and this is the confidence that we have in him. Yes. That if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. Amen. Amen. And if we know that he heareth us, whatsoever we ask, yes. we know that we have the petitions that we desire of him. Yes. Now this is a wonderful promise Amen. in the Bible. Mm -hmm. This is a promise that tells us that if we can just pray in his will, that whatever it is, the Bible said you can know this, that whatever it is, whatsoever, see if it's in his will, whatsoever we ask, yes. we know. Amen. We know yes. that we have the petition that we desire of him. Amen. Amen. So I became interested in that. Amen? In other words, I have a promise from God if I would just pray in his will, whatever it was I was asking in his will, <coughs> you get it. Amen. Amen? It's a fact. You get it. Yes, sir. And then it, it reminded me back, the, the scripture reference, you know, <coughs> according to his will, reminded me of, then of the scripture that we had 
mentioned earlier in Romans chapter 8 that the Holy Ghost yeah. is praying yes. according to his will. Amen. Amen. So now if I could just find out what the Holy Ghost was praying, <laughs> I could get those prayers answered. Amen. Now, believe me, I'm not going off the deep end here. Amen. Um, but then, well, all scripture, amen, is given by inspiration of God. Amen. amen. Well, then, what was it? What were the prayers then that the Spirit inspired in the Bible? And so I decided that I wanted to go to the Bible and find these Bible prayers. Because Paul wrote these prayers down. He was praying for these churches and these individual Christians. And he was inspired. Yep. By the Holy Spirit of God to write these prayers down. And these have to be the things that God is desiring of his people. According to the will of God. So if I can go through and find these prayers. And then begin to pray these prayers according to the will of God. I can get the answer. They will be answered. Amen. They will be answered according to God's word. Amen. Amen. Now, also in my text, there's a word there that pops up that says, and this is the confidence. Yes. The confidence Amen. that we have in him. Now, the biblical definition of confidence is trust. Amen. 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 The Bible says what? It is better... To trust in the Lord than to have confidence in men. It is better to trust in the Lord than to have confidence in princes. Amen. Amen. So confidence is trust. Amen. But how do we trust somebody we don't know? I mean, when you raise your children, I mean, and even for those of us who have grown, haven't we experienced what happens when we trust people we don't know? Yeah. Uh -huh. yep. Amen. We get disappointed, right? right. Amen. 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 You got to have somebody. The Bible tells us in Proverbs 25, 19, unfaithful, <clears throat> an unfaithful man, you know, is, is, is not good to trust, have confidence in an unfaithful man in the time of trouble. Right. The Bible said it's like a broken tooth uh -huh. and a foot out of joint. Now, you know what a broken tooth is like, amen, if you've had one. Now, praise God, I haven't had one, you know, where it's caused me a problem. But if it's broken in there, it's really affecting everything you're doing with your mouth, what you like to do with your mouth, speaking, eating, drinking. Yep. It's messing you up. And if you got a foot out of joint, again, I think the Bible is very specific. You know, you might have a knee out of joint, and you can still hobble around. But now let that foot get out of joint. Yep. Amen? Because that foot is holding all the pressure of your body. Amen? Right, right. It's damaging your mobility and your ability to get around. Amen? Yes. Well, the Bible says having confidence in an unfaithful man is that, is that same thing. Yes. So we need to know who we trust in. You know, we need to know who we have our confidence in. Yes. So, you know, as I was going through, now I'm not going to really go through this list. I'm really just going to go through one point on this list. Amen. Uh, but I have me a list here of Bible prayer. It's, it's, it's 15. I mean, I limited to 15 because there's a whole bunch of them in the Bible. Amen. And you won't ever uh, be able to pray them all at any one setting. You know, I want to pray these at a setting, uh, <clears throat> these Bible prayers. And I limited, you know, I really pray them for myself and for my wife. You know, I have other times where prayers are given for other things. Um, you know, like for the church, for you, for other churches, for other members, for those who are wayward, uh, you know, so for our missionaries, so forth and so on. Amen. All right. But Amen. I wanted to get on some of these Bible prayers because I can get a promise from God. Amen. Yes. That they <clears throat> would be answered. Amen. And the first, really the very first prayer, um, that 
I wanted to start with was, in other words, if I'm to have confidence in God, I want to know him. Amen? I want to know him. Amen. I know I've been saved by him. I've been brought into relationship to him through the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm born again. I'm now his child. Amen. I'm a son of God. But now I want to know him. And God wants me to know him. Amen. 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 He doesn't just want me to know that he saved me, right. but he wants me to know him. Amen. 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 The first prayer would be to know the true and the living God. I have three or four verses, but I'm not going to look at all those verses. Let's just look at one of those verses. Amen. Ephesians chapter 1. Let's just look at one of those verses. Amen. This is a prayer that Paul prayed for the Ephesian church. Mm -hmm. And uh, they've been saved. Amen. They've been washed in the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. And they were serving him. And Paul was, had mentioned that he was praying for them. Amen. And this is one of his prayers. Let's um, this is read starting at verse 16. I cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. Amen. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened. Amen. Yes. Again, Paul was not only they've been saved, but now Paul was praying for them that God will give them <clears throat> spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. It was important for them to go on now as Christians to have an intimate and real relationship with the true and living God. Amen. Yeah. And that the eyes of their understanding would be enlightened. Amen. That they would have an understanding of who God was. That was important. Again, the psalmist says what? As the heart panteth after the brooks, so panteth my soul after thee, O God. My soul thirsteth for God, right. the living God. Is that true in our life? Amen? Amen? That we want to know God. Amen? To have that intimate relationship with him as a person. See, not just to know of him, mm -hmm. right. but to know him. See, all through the Bible, you'll find out God wanted men and women to know him. Amen. Amen. And because of their knowing him, yes. they would become, they would go on to love him yes. and they would place their confidence and their trust in yes. him unlike any other people. Amen. Amen. To know him. And that's a prayer. Now, if I could sum up, if I would try to just sum up in simple terms, my Christian life. Amen. Yes, that's right. God working with me in my Christian life. If I would try to sum that up, I would just simply say that um, the Lord has been dealing with me ever since I've been saved for me to trust him. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. And that's always a point of emphasis in his life. I need you to trust me. I remember there was a, you know, an incident at work uh, when I was working. You know, they they would take our routes, and yes. after so many years, you know, they the company would take them back, yeah. and then they would rearrange them. That's right. Uh, yeah. You know, and that was their way of uh, uh, taking back control of yeah. their routes and then right. rearranging them because their whole uh, purpose was they wanted more growth, and yeah. they didn't want us to be stagnant in what we did. I didn't particularly care for it. I called it communism. Uh, amen. amen. Because uh, it would reward those who had not worked yes. as hard as those who had worked. That's right. Amen. Because I had worked and I would built up my relationship with my customers. Right. Yes. Amen. And I was, you know, and I had, and I had the money rolling in because of that relationship was built. You know. Yes. And after a while, they come take it. They take half of it, rearrange it, you know, and then give it. And that way, they can right. put more routes. Right. on the thing and you know I, I didn't like that I said because I'm getting older now and I want to ride the gravy train till I retire right. Right. I don't want to have to do all this all over and over and over again you know right. and so they did this and they took these routes in and so you know we on the board and you both you know seniority comes up you're on the board so you're looking over this route so actually you know you're looking over there to see which one I'm going to provide the most cash right you know you go to work of course and so I'm looking up there, and and the, and the Lord impressed on me. He said, I want you to take the last one. 
Yeah. And I said, what? Uh, the one that's making the less money, that I want you to take that one. I said, no, no wait a minute. You know, right. you know. <laughs> uh, Lord, we got this, we got that, we got this, we got yeah, yeah. You know, uh, you know that business of walking by faith. You know, Amen. Well, I'm surely walking by sight, Amen. I ain't walking by no faith. You know, right. I'm looking at them dollar bills, Amen. And uh, he said, No, 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 no. Take that last one. You know. And I said, Well, Lord, I'm have to, I'm have to pray on this. You know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm going to pray on it, you know, and the Lord's the one talking to me, telling me to take it. Well, who am I praying to, amen? You know, well, Lord, did you change your mind yet? Um, and, uh, you know, and, and so, you know, well, while I went by till we finally had to declare on this thing, and I'm sitting there, I mean, I, I mean it, I'm telling you, there was a real... Yeah. It was a real, uh, it was a real hill to climb. It was a real turning point uh, in my life, you know, and um, and so I took it, like you said, sister choices, you know, and I took it, and you know, quite a few people were surprised. And I'm surprised. Why would you take that? You know, I said, well, the Lord told me to. Amen. And uh, <laughs> it worked out. Amen. Uh -huh. It worked out. He he built the thing back up, mm -hmm. amen. And uh, in, in a while, I was making all the money that I had made, even more than before, amen. But I mean, that was just his way of once again dealing with me through my life of yes. saying, yes. "Look, I need you to have confidence in me. Mm -hmm. I need you to trust me." Well, why didn't I really trust him, amen? Because I didn't really know him like I should have knew him. Amen. I didn't know him like I should have knew him. Amen. Because, again, God's whole desire in our life is what? He's predestinated us that we be what? Conformed to the image of his son. Amen. He's amen. doing everything in our lives, amen, so that we would be exactly like the Lord Jesus. Now, we know one day. That's going to be a truth, amen. He's going to change his vile body, amen. Be changed like under his glorious body, amen. That's a truth, and that's going to happen. But right now, in the world in which we live, yes. the Lord also wants yes. us to be changed, amen? amen. There's really two parts to the gospel, amen. Yeah. The gospel, one, saves us from the penalty of sin, amen. It saves us from hell, but at the second part of that gospel is that it saves us from the power of sin. Amen. Yes. There's to be a changed life because we receive the gospel. And that changed life is to be like yes. the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And how he was in his person, in his reality. Again, Paul said he prayed for the Galatians. Again, he said, my little children are to veil until what? Christ be formed in you. Amen. Till Christ be formed in you. And that's God's goal in our life. And that happens when we have confidence in him. But we won't have confidence in him if we don't know him. So all through our life, God is putting things in our way and for us to trust him. Right. Right. Amen? Uh -huh. He's putting things in our way for us to trust him until we finally come to the point where why? That is what I want to accomplish in your life. This is what I want right here. And then the world yes. will see that. Amen. Amen. The Amen. world will Amen. see that. Now I'm just going to take a little time here and I'm going to, I'm going to show you a biblical example of that. Amen. Mm -hmm. And then we'll close it. Amen. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's look at the, and it's not, I can't, it's not going to be long. I'm just going to go through this, but let's turn to, uh, Genesis chapter 12. Uh -huh. and, we'll, and we'll just come through here and we'll just quickly, quickly, yeah. we'll just quickly look at the life of Abraham. Amen? Amen? Just quickly look at his life. Amen? Again, when we get to chapter 12, we see that, amen, that God had um, called him from the Ur Chaldees. Amen. He came down there, and in chapter 12, the Lord had told him again, you know, 
to get there out of the country and go to the land that um, he had uh, called him to and that he gave him that promise in verse 3 that he was blessing. Bless those that bless thee and curse those that curse thee and in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Right. Amen. This is right. the beginning of Abraham's walk with God. Amen. Right. And he tells him these things and uh, he told him, he said, uh, he's going to give him a whole bunch of land there. And then uh, Abraham gets this, and then what does Abraham do? Well, there's a famine in the land. He goes down in, <clears throat> into Egypt, and uh, what does he do? Well, he puts his wife in arms away. Amen? Right. Mm -hmm. He doesn't do good when he goes down there. Right. Amen? Now, God had already told him that... Uh, in these should all the families of the earth be blessed. Amen? He told him that he was going to... His seed was going to inherit a land. But now he puts his wife in danger down there, you know. Right, yeah. Why? Because he, do, he doesn't really know God. That's right. Amen. Right. He doesn't really know God. And he's living by what he knows how to do. Yeah. Uh -huh. Amen. By sight. By his flesh. Amen. Right. And so we go on, you know, and then we get to uh, chapter 13. You know, they have this separation between... Uh, he and Lot, uh -huh. and uh, then the Lord uh, gets Abraham there about verse 14 and tells him, he said, look at all that land right there, Abraham, for all the land which thou seest to thee will I give it, uh, to thy seed forever. And I'll make thy, seed the dust, make thy seed the dust of the earth, so that if a man can number the dust of the earth, then shall thy seed also be numbered. Now, what a, one, what a, a thing, you know, a, a, a word to say yeah. uh, to Abraham. But again, told him he's going to have the seed. Amen. Again, obviously the seed going to be with his wife. Amen. Uh, mm -hmm. And so uh, he gets this promise. The Lord gives him another promise, speaking to him. And then we know we get to chapter 14. And as Pastor Dan is so often preached on, we have the Mamre Militia. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. And so here Abraham goes out and he fights and God delivers all these uh, wicked kings into his hand. He delivers his, uh, yes. his nephew, which he also calls his brother, amen, his yeah. family, amen, yeah. his brother. And he delivers him and he meets Melchizedek. Yeah. You know, Melchizedek blessing him. And he's some great mountaintop experiences, yeah. amen. It's amen. wonderful, amen. It's wonderful. And then we go on and we get to uh, chapter 15. And uh, the Lord uh, tells him in verse 1, he said, I am thy shield and thy exceeding great reward. And then Abraham has a complaint. Uh -huh. Because God said he was supposed to have all these children. They're going to inherit all this land, so forth and so on. Yeah. What is it? I ain't got no child. <laughs> huh? Where the baby at? You know? Um, yeah. And the steward of my house. Amen. This Eleazar of Damascus. You know, one born in my house. And, and, the, and the Lord told him, no, 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 no. Um, you know, I told you. And he said, this shall not be thine heir. Amen. Right. But he that shall come forth out of thine own bowels shall be thine heir. Amen. And he brought him and showed him all the land. Amen. And he said unto thee, and so shall thy seed be. And the Bible said he believed in the Lord. And he accounted to him for righteousness. Amen. He believed him. And he got the righteousness. And then God made that... Um, covenant with him, you yes. know, uh, and told him, uh, gave him a little heads up. He said, however, you know, your children are going to go down here in Egypt. They're going to be down here 400 years, but then they're going to come out and come to the land that are given. Now, let me just put this in as a side note. Um, now, as God has given these promises to Abraham, he told Abraham that Abraham and his seed would inherit this land Forever. Forever. Now, do they have it today? They don't have it today. But if one would just read through Jeremiah, Ezekiel, mm -hmm. and Isaiah, mm -hmm. he promised them time and time again mm -hmm. that I'm going to give you this land for yes. an everlasting covenant. It'll be yours forever and ever and ever. Now do you know if that's not true then we have no business being here today. 
That's right. Do you understand that, don't you? Mm -hmm. The Bible says God cannot lie. That's right. Amen. Amen. He cannot lie. Right. Yes. He promised that land to him, and that Abraham and his seed would be on that land forever. Uh -huh. Amen. If we can't trust that, because those are the first promises in the Bible. Amen. Amen. Uh -huh. If we can't trust that, if God cannot deliver on that, then what else can he not deliver on? Right. See, but he's going to deliver on it. Amen. Amen. He's going to deliver on it. Yes, They're going to get that land, brother, and every other promise in there he's going to deliver on, just like the one we're talking about today. Amen. Amen. So he goes on, he shows them. A little bit more in that land, tell them they're going to come out in the fourth generation, amen? And then we get to chapter 16, and uh, somehow or another, again, Abraham didn't stop to think that uh, maybe this isn't the right way, amen? God told me I'd have seed by my own bowels, amen, and he'd given me a wife, but somehow or another when Sarai offered up Hagar, uh, he didn't offer up no prayers, amen? He just jumped on it, amen? Right. And he committed a terrible sin in doing that. And, and, and his nation is praying for that sin today. Mm -hmm. right. Even today. Amen. Mm -hmm. Again, we don't, again, we talk a lot about sin in Sunday school. Amen. But look at sin has a consequence. Yes, it and does. it will have a consequence in your family. Yes, it does. Amen. Now, yeah. your children won't go to hell because of your sin, but they will suffer. Yes, sir. Because of your sin. Yeah. Amen. And your parents will also suffer yes. because of the sin that you children commit. Right. It's not just an isolated incident. Right. Amen? Sin messes everything up. I heard one preacher, when he was teaching me in class, he said, sin never leaves anything better after it found it. Amen? Right. Right. It always messes it up. And boy, this didn't leave anything better either. Amen? Right. Uh, again, they brought his children again. What God had just given him this one. What did he do? God just gave him that wonderful promise in verse 15, chapter 15. Amen. And what did he do right away? Well, this must be what God meant. Why would he do that? He didn't know God. Amen. He didn't really know who he was. He didn't know about the holiness of God yet. Amen. Amen. So he's still operating best he know how. Amen. And that cost him. We see when we get to chapter 17, it cost him. As far as we know, we don't have any written information about any fellowship for 13 years. Amen. Between he and God. To find that God shows up. Amen. It's always God showing up. Amen. 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 When we get our source and you know we get out of the way. Amen. Isn't he the good shepherd? He always shows up. Amen. Amen. And brings us back. Amen. He goes out on the mountain. There's the little sheep. Up there on the mountain, lost, eagle circling, you know, and the Lord come get us. Amen. And the Lord shows up and, and says, Abraham, now be perfect. Walk before me and be perfect. Amen. And Abraham fell on his face and talked. And the Bible says at that time he changed his name from Abram to Abraham. Amen. Yes. Uh, again, made him some more wonderful promises about his seed and the land. And then he also told him, he said, uh, and your wife, Sarah, we're going to change her name too. Call her Sarah, amen. And then Sarah going to bear you a child about this time, amen, in a year yeah. or so. And what did Abraham do? The Bible said he laughed. Yes, yeah. <laughs> he laughed, amen. He laughed there in verse 17. Then Abraham fell on his face and laughed. He said in his heart, there shall a child be born unto him that is a hundred years old. And show Sarah that <clears throat> that is 90, a bear child. Amen. He laughed. But the Lord went on and told him. He jumped up. <laughs> Let Ishmael, you know, live forever. He said, no, 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 Abraham. Uh -huh. Abraham, I'm going to give you a child. Amen. Right, right. And I'm going to establish my covenant with your son, Isaac. Amen. Give him that promise. Amen. And so we go on a little while and. You know, they get to chapter 18, the Lord shows up, and the Lord repeats again the same thing to him in chapter 18. Amen? That he was going to have a child. Amen? Right. And this time, you know, Sarah was back in the tent. She's supposed to be getting the food ready, but you know how that is sometimes. You oh, know, yeah. some, somebody having a little conversation. You know, 
lean up on the wall. You know, let's <laughs> let's, let's get in on this. Amen. <laughs> and so again, she and she hears the Lord say, "What? Um, that she gonna bear a child?" And what did the Bible say? She laughed. Yes. Amen. In herself, she laughed. And the Lord said, surely now, you're going to have a child. He said, why did Sarah laugh? And then Sarah, and then she what? She lied. Mm -hmm. I didn't laugh. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? But, you know, that's the Lord. Amen. He said, surely you did laugh. Amen. But you will bear a child in that time. Amen. And so he gives them that wonderful promise. Now, again, I believe, I believe it was at that time that they rethought what God had said. Abraham and Sarah. The Bible tells us in the book of Romans that the Bible said that Abraham staggered not yeah. at the promise of God, but that it was full of faith. I believe it was at that time that they got together and rethought what God had said, and they had begun to look back <coughs> over their life. Yes. Amen? Uh -huh. They had begun to look back and take account of the fact of what God had done. Yes. Yeah in their life and they looked at each other and they said you know what yeah if god said that i think we can trust him because he had repeated it time and time and time again to them amen over the course of their life mm -hmm. dealing with them that they will what have confidence in him right. and trust him Amen. And so then we get there. We get to chapter 19. We have the situation with Sodom and Gomorrah and Lot and the right. Lord uh, and, and, and Abraham lifting up his intercessory prayer for his, uh, for his nephew. Uh, that God would deliver the city if there be ten righteous. But all he could see was the smoke and fire coming up. He didn't even know if Lot had even survived. Amen. Because God burned up the city. He couldn't find. Ten righteous there. Amen. Right. And then we get to chapter 20. And what does Abraham do again? Well, he goes down in the gear. And what does he do? He offers up his wife again. Yeah. He offers up his wife again. Sinning again. Amen. Putting her in harm's way. This is the woman that he's going to have this child by. Yeah. But yet to save his neck. Yeah. Amen. He offered up his wife again. Why? Because he still didn't know the Lord like he should have known the Lord. Amen. Right. And so finally then we get to chapter 21 and what happens just like God said Sarah has the baby. Amen. She has the baby. And God had already told her, you know, now this is what you're going to call him, Isaac. Now Isaac means what? Laughter. And so, hey, don't you know, every time they would call that boy, they would be reminded of the right. fact of how they laughed. Yes. They uh -huh. both laughed at God. But now, not only that, but how God had changed that. Now, as Sarah was saying in chapter 21, now people will laugh with me. She's laughing with joy because now her reproach has been taken away and now she's born this man child, amen, according to God. Now all of the neighbors and family are coming and they're rejoicing together over this woman, 90 <laughs> years old. What a miracle, amen. What a miracle. She's bouncing his little baby boy. And it's at this point when they knew that they could trust him. Amen. And so much so that when we get to the very next chapter, then what does God do? He tempts him. Amen. Yeah. He tempts him to see, now, do you trust me? Do you really have confidence in me? Abraham, I want you to go up there. Take your boy, take him up on Mount Moriah yeah. and sacrifice him, the one you love. And what did Abraham do? Unlike the movie, The Ten Commandments, amen, and Charlton Heston. You don't see where he fought. You don't see where he struggled. Right. You don't see where he was praying and begging God, no, 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 no. 
No, no, no. The book of Hebrews gives us the insight into what Abraham was thinking as he took the boy up there. Yeah. Amen. God had given me these promises. He said that my seed yes. would be uh, like the stars in heaven, yes. like the sand yes. of the sea. Yes. My seed would inherit this yes. land forever. I have an everlasting covenant. So in other words, God is going to do yes. something here to make this true. Amen. And so he took him up there, brother, ready Hallelujah. to sacrifice him. God calls out, Abraham, Abraham. He said, I, now I know it, that thou fearest me, because thou art not withheld from me thy only son, right. Isaac. And it's at that time, as we read through the Bible, what does God call Abraham? My friend. Amen. Abraham was my friend. As the book of James tells us, that at that time that he was justified in that what he had said, he believed earlier. He now showed it to the world. Yes. My confidence and my trust yes. is in the God that had given me this son, that one day he would raise him again. Right. from the dead. In other words, he had become what God had wanted him to be through his journey in life of knowing yes. the true and living God yes. and then coming to place his trust and his confidence in him. Again, that God himself calls Abraham my friend That's right. in the book of Isaiah and also in the Second Chronicles chapter 20. And then James chapter 2 backs that up. You call, Abraham was called the friend of God. Now the Bible says God spoke to Moses as a friend, as he would speak to a friend yes. face to face. But Abraham, amen, was his friend. That's right, amen. Man. So again, you and I, our Christian journey, is God is doing everything in his life for you to trust him, for you to have confidence in him. Uh -huh. One of the prayers that we pray, amen, is that we might know him. Uh -huh. And in knowing him, amen, then we will place more of our trust and our confidence in him. Amen. amen. So again, you know, let us pray the prayers that will be answered. Amen. Let us pray these Bible prayers. And first of all, let us start out then seeking, amen, to know the true and living God and asking God to help us to pant after him. Amen. Right. As that heart panted after that water broke. Amen. 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 Let us pray the prayers that get an answer. Preacher, amen. 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 Am